this is the second series of emails. This is the first section of the second series of emails videos that we're going to do. So this is 2A, I guess. <coughs> Hello, thank you for looking at this next section of the uh, free VOM technology materials that we're trying to give to you. This particular short video is designed just to explain to you how it is that this technology works and why it works the way it does work. In looking at the first video, you said, wow, this is very easy. Anybody can do that. And you're actually right. You also may have said to yourself, gosh, I don't know if I can do that. And people have said that in the past. I've just said, just try it. In about five minutes, they're adjusting animals as effectively as I have for the last 35 years. We're going to use an instrument like this. And remember, you cannot use the device that is called the JTEC instrument, which I've actually thrown away. Uh, essentially either because it does not work very well but the ones that we have and also the ones from activator methods will work fine they fire about a one to two millisecond pulse and they deliver an energy that is quick and fast and will not produce enough motion to cause any kind of injury and that's important to understand the body can move 80 milliseconds however the animal's resistance to motion is 20 milliseconds so unless the animal wants to cooperate the animal is four times faster than the human is However, when we fire at one millisecond, we're actually 20 times faster than, in fact, the body is able to resist. So the animal, whether they want to cooperate or not, are also going to give us reads and they're also going to get adjusted. Actually, as you saw from the video, they just stand there, essentially. Also, they'll release endorphins and enkephalins, which feel really good. And so they like to be adjusted. They like to be readjusted. And you can't finish adjusting the horse without the horse feeling pretty darn good essentially right off the bat. Remember, what we're trying to do is we're trying to take an off switch and flip it to the on side, okay? Just like an like a electrical switch. Now, if the switch is already on, you can't flip it anymore on. The body is built this way. It's called presynaptic inhibition. We spend extensive amounts of time in module one, two, three, and four, showing you the neurophysiology, exactly how that works. Also, in the module one, which you can download at the end of the next video, essentially, we'll go through and show you where the research is. People say, well, where's the research on that VOM technology? There's tons of it, actually, and it's been researched, class, type, uh, class A type one research that is double-blinded and also placebo-based research that was done and published out of uh, uh, chiropractic teaching colleges, uh, Life Chiropractic West, specifically in the work done by Malik Slosberg et al. and his people. So there's plenty of research that validates this technology. By the way, that research was all done on the beagle colonies, beagle colonies, which is interesting. I'm going to show you an analogy for what it is that we do with this device, but remember what we do is we come down and we put energy into the vertebral segments in a row, like zipping and unzipping a zipper. And if you look at the dorsal spinous process here, the bone actually acts as a conduit to take energy from the whacker or the adjusting device, click through the bone to where the actual subluxation phenomenon exists. The subluxation phenomenon, or in this case subluxation complex phenomenon, is a neurological interference that is present with or without radiographic evidence, which means that it doesn't have a listing associated with it. We can't necessarily find it on x-ray, although sometimes we can. 40% of the vertebral subluxation complexes that we have essentially will have listings associated with it, things that we can actually palpate. However, 100% all have readings associated with them and we can elucid elucidate them with these uh, reflexes that you saw on the previous dog that we adjusted. Our goal in chiropractic adjustment or an animal adjustment is to find all of the reads and reduce all of them all the time. And we can do that with this technology, whereas we can only get 40% of the subluxation complexes that are present in an animal with a manual adjustment technique. So as soon as you're done with this mini course, essentially, you'll already be a better adjuster than the best of the manual chiropractors out there, which, by the way, they're probably not too keen on me saying that, but it's true. Remember, we have trained over 5,000 graduate chiropractors and over 4,000 graduate veterinarians, essentially, that are doing this technology right now. Let me show you a quick analogy of what it is that we're trying to do so you can get it and why it is that the whacker device makes the boo-boo go away. <clears throat> this is the circuit breaker box in a basic house. 
and you can see the various circuits essentially all of them are flipped uh, in the order of which they're supposed to this one is flipped off by mistake on is to the right side and so they're all on on this particular side <coughs> the analogy here of the circuit break it bo breaker box essentially is that if in fact the light goes out or a circuit is flipped open you basically come and find the one that's flipped to the off side and flip it to the on side you can basically just flip it to the on side the same thing is true with in fact the spinal cord if for instance the spinal cord has one that's out you basically will go through and fire it here and flip it from the off side to the on side now the important thing to understand here is that if in fact one of the circuits for instance was compromised stay if one of the circuits were compromised for instance then what you would do is flip it on click it on like that okay it was the off side it goes on to the on side it can only go to the on side what if that particular circuit breaker was the lights to the downstairs area in front of the circuit box well without a flashlight you would just feel for which one was out and then you would flip them all to the on side essentially now if you flipped it to the on side the lights come back on again and you go back and go to sleep essentially but what would happen if you kept flipping it the on the the, the circuit breaker that was off which we flip back on and you kept firing it on 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 would the lights go more on no could you break or would you break the switch no and this is the way the body is situated the circuits are designed with presynaptic inhibition to only go from the off side to the on side and that's the only thing you can do with this device if you were to fire it into a normal vertebral segment a thousand times it is not going to go any more on you're not going to basically create a vertebral subluxation complex anybody who tells you that you can create an injury with this device obviously doesn't know anything about neurology This rather unique analogy, essentially, that I just showed you was a means by which we can try to give you an idea of how it is that we can flip these switches on. All we're doing is flipping switches on. We're not creating anything more than just recommunicating the body with its own self and its own ability to solve its own problem, essentially. In Module 2, we go actually into this rather extensively and show how that portends and how it uh, connects with all the various kinds of applications that we treat with dozens upon dozens of specific diseases for dogs, cats, and horses, etc. In Module 3, we adapt that to horses and cats, particularly Module 4, somatovisceral myofascial release. This video is supposed to show you that there is, in fact, a huge amount of science associated with this technology. That particular science has been researched extensively, which you can download at the end of this uh, short series in Module 1. And if anybody asks you if there's any research that's done on that, you can say, yes, in fact, that has been done. It has been uh, researched. It has been refereed. And it has been published in journals that rarely see the veterinary medical teaching colleges so essentially it is something that is out there it's just not seen very much this is why most veterinarians are not aware of this technology and how it works except for of course the over 4,000 veterinary practitioners that I have trained and are using this technology as we speak right now I'd encourage you to go ahead then and uh, wait for the next uh, email I'm going to send you and we'll go over the information on how to apply this in your clinical practice essentially what to do what not to do etc etc and I'll see you in the next video.